Before and during a race, there is more focus put on the tyres of an F1 car than any other part of the vehicle. They may last just 60 to 200 kilometers before they become unusable, but the F1 tire is one of the most important parts of the entire machine. These tires are taller, wider, and longer than the kinds of tires you'd find on a regular car. That's because these high performance tires need the extra power and grip to withstand the stresses that they're submitted to whilst out on the track. In this video, we're going to be showing you all you need to know about F1 tires and how they are made. Enjoy! The making of an F1 tire is an incredibly complicated procedure. F1 tires are made up of seven tire compounds, five slick compounds for dry tracks, and two rain compounds for wet tracks. Pirelli, one of the major manufacturers and suppliers of F1 tires since the year 2011, labels the slick compound tires as C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5, with C1 being the hardest tire that provides the least grip but it's the most durable, and C5 being the softest, having the most grip but being the least durable. The degree of softness to hardness ranging from the C1 to C5 range depends on the country. So while the United Kingdom's labeling system has soft on C2, medium on C3, and hard on C4, a tire of the same measurement from a different country may have an entirely different firmness. Now that we know what makes up an F1 tire, let's take a look at how they're made. Planning and design. Now, before we go anywhere near the construction process, we've got to understand the planning and design phases of the tire. So, what materials are used? What considerations must be made when making the tires? What form or shape will the tire take on? All of these questions are answered by the engineers in a lab before the tires are made. This process is done in stages. The first stage is to test the compounds and components that are going to make up the structure of the tires. At this point, you should also note that the composition and structure of the F1 tires is more than just rubber. In fact, just 10% of natural rubber is actually needed for the formation of the tire. That's in total. Other components include synthetic materials and other artificial fibers. The next stage is when computer simulations are run to test the various properties of the tire. And this is to get a better understanding of how the tire is going to perform under various conditions. Track temperatures, weather conditions, track bends or corners, and track surface conditions. All of these factors must be accounted for when building the tire, and mistakes must be caught at this stage to prevent accidents occurring later on during the actual testing phases, and heaven forbid, out on the track during race day. Next, the results are sent to factories for the tires to be put together, and then it's on to the testing phase. During testing, the tires are put through various conditions that they are likely to face whilst out on the track. Most of the time, these tests are more rigorous than the conditions that the tires are exposed to out on the track during an actual race. After this rigorous testing is completed, the tires are then sent for track testing. The tires that make it through these stages will then go on forward to be mass produced. Manufacturing The manufacturing of these tires starts right at the basics with the bead wire and carcass. The bead wire is the foundational support of the tire, and it's there to support drifting on the track during a race. It is the least flexible section in the makeup of a tire and is made of steel. The bead wire is further covered with a casing that is made of composite materials. This casing is what makes up the stiffness and the hardness of the tires. After the casing is laid, the tread belt, which is the outer visible part of the tire, covers the outside. This bit is often referred to as the heart of the tire, and it's the very surface that touches the racetrack during a race. The tread belt is a visible representation of the dry and wet tire compounds, and it determines the performance and grip level on the track. It is made concurrently with the bead wire and carcass. Patterns are made on the tread belt to serve either the rain compounds for wet tracks or the slick compounds on dry tracks. And of course, the tire is filled with gas, as the tread belt covers the whole makeup of the tire. A proper breakdown of the gas that the tire is filled with goes something like this. 78% is nitrogen, 21% is oxygen, and 1% is moisture and other gases. The composition of nitrogen in the tire is more important than any other gas and it's also more abundant inside the tire, and it's preferred by engineers that handle the making of the F1 tires because nitrogen is a more stable gas, and it contains a much lower moisture content. Throughout testing, it was determined that nitrogen balances out the temperature and pressure that the tires are exposed to, and this helps to maintain the tire's stability whilst out on the track. 
With more moisture, which could be contained inside the oxygen that's in the tire, the stability of the tire is going to fluctuate, and it won't be able to handle the extreme temperatures that the tire is subjected to while in use. So, engineers try as much as possible to avoid the use of high percentages of oxygen inside the tires. After this, the F1 tires are labeled with an identity barcode that contains all the information about the tires. They're then taken down to the next stage, which is vulcanization. This stage tests the tires and determines their overall compound structure. A quality control test is also conducted through a detailed visual check. This is done with x-ray scans and measurements of the tire's weight. Once all of these tests are done, the F1 tires are ready to be used in a race or testing session. Now, let's jump back to comparing these tires with the ones that you'd found on a regular old car. While a normal road tire could withstand forces up to 1G, F1 tires are built to withstand forces of up to 4G. F1 tires aren't made to last hundreds and hundreds of miles like regular road tires, so the priority is placed on performance over durability. Choosing the right tires As we've discussed, there are two types of tires, dry and wet tires. The major difference between these tires is the tread belt pattern. Let's look a little bit more into this. Dry tires have a slick tread, which means that the surface pattern is nice and smooth. To save confusion when it comes to determining what tires are currently being used, a color identification system was introduced. Soft tires are red, medium are yellow, and hard tires are white. The color appears on the sidewall of the tire. So next time you're watching the F1, look closely and you might be able to see what tires a team has equipped. Choosing the right kind of tire is going to be made based on a range of variables. The type of track, the region that the track's in, for example, the country, and the weather conditions. For example, if it gets really hot, hard tires are preferable. The heat could wear out the tires faster, and that's why during races in hot conditions, the teams pay more attention to the tires. The tires on the race car could be changed about two times in such weather conditions or in such temperature conditions. In essence, whenever tire will be used in a race, the teams that change tires have to be very smart and quick because the success of the race depends on their efficiency with changing those tires and using them on the track. Racing in the rain There are two types of tire compound for racing in wet conditions. The pattern on the surface of wet tire compounds is different from that of the dry compound tires. They have a grooved tread pattern, and this grooved pattern is rough in order to cut through any water that the tires make contact with on the surface of the track. Typically, there are two kinds of wet tires. The first kind is used in very heavy rain, and their composition enables them to drain 65 to 85 liters of water per second thanks to their aggressive grooves in the surface of the tire. The label for this kind of wet tire compound is blue. The second wet tire compound is the intermediate tire. This is quite suitable for any track condition, apart from the rain and damp tracks. It drains about 30 liters of water per second, and you can recognize it by the green color on the side wall of the tire. In summary, rain tire compounds are all about how much water you've got to drain per second. Pick the blue tires if there's a lot of surface water, or choose the red ones if conditions aren't quite as treacherous. Let's wrap it up. F1 tires are amazing pieces of engineering, and the amount of work that goes into bringing them from a CAD screen to out onto the track during a race day is staggering. We hope you found this video interesting, and we'd love to hear your thoughts down below on topics that you'd like us to cover in the future. Thanks for watching, and stay safe. Listen.